Ladies and gentlemen, we have a big week coming up in the stock market, and we're going to get you ready for this upcoming week right now. We are looking at SPY, how it finished the week. Very nice week. If I jump over to the weekly timeframes here, we can see we had a very strong week, not on a ton of volume. And is that super surprising with what we've got coming up next week? Not really. We, we, we can see that sometimes. What is coming up next week? Well, let's get into it. So next week, we are looking at a week filled with news. Monday, not much. Quiet. Tuesday, core PPI or PPI, the producer price index comes out. Wednesday, the consumer price index comes out, CPI. Also, Jerome Powell is apparently speaking at 10 a.m. on Tuesday. Talk about a market mover. While the market's open, that's a day right there to be watching closely to see what happens. Well, I, you could come back at the end of the day. I mean, you do whatever you want to do. I, I mean, you, it's not up to me, right? But if you are actively trading, be careful of, of that because you think, oh, PPI is out. Oh, that's great. You know, market's going to move now. No, no, no. Jerome Powell apparently is speaking at 10 a.m. Okay. That's not something to be just taken too, too lightly because he can move the markets with one, one word. Cuts. Hikes. <laughs> Interest rates. He says anything like that. And it's like, oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Wednesday, CPI. And then a bunch more data comes out. Thursday, jobless claims manufacturing, how all the stuff, lots of data. I'm not going to name everything, lots of data. And then Friday, leading economic indicators, kind of chill day, kind of a chill day. Monday and Friday are kind of chill days, but Tuesday through Thursday, we got a sandwich of a week. I mean, we got some, you know, just all, all I see right here is some super thin bread. I mean, this bread is some white, super thin I mean, like half the normal size of a slice with a shit ton of meat packed in the middle. Now, that's what I see for next week. Just an absolute plethora of meat fillings. I mean, we are talking, we're trying to load a sandwich up then, and it's not, it's not going to fit. Okay. That's next week. So with that said, Think about that one. I mean, that that should get your your mouth watering going into next week. We are very close to an all-time high attempt on the S&P on SPY. We are about 5 bucks, less than 5 bucks away from a new all-time high, which is nothing. It can do that in a day. No problem. So something to keep in mind as we move into next week. A little bit further away on QQQ from all-time highs. Uh, pretty close on DIA, the Dow. The Dow is about eh, three or the or DIA, I should say, is about four dollars away, three and a half, four dollars away from all time highs. Where we see a little bit of a difference is the Russell, not as strong, had a very weak Friday. And why would that be the case, potentially? And there's no guarantee I can answer that question, right? No one can a hundred percent with certainty answer that why this happened. You can't. But a great signal could be over on the 10 year. The 10 year was up, the 10 year yield was up on a Friday and then the the Russell risk on stocks, small cap stocks, well, they were down. And that's kind of been the, the pattern we have been watching and seeing unfold over the past couple of weeks. So not super surprising there. The dollar, how's the dollar doing? Not a lot. It tried to break back above the into this consolidation range, but it's struggling to do so as of late. So we're kind of in a holding pattern there. However, gold and silver Gold and silver, those two guys are uh, trying to turn the corner and curl right back on up. They look pretty strong. They're trying to bet, you know, maybe in a breakdown here, a little false breakdown, a little, a little lower wick. And then how here it comes on gold back to the upside. Silver, same thing. Not the strongest of Fridays, but a very strong Thursday and still up on the week for sure on both gold and silver. Something I would be watching closely, whether the market trends or not in either direction. Market's been pretty choppy the past couple of months. But gold and silver, though, on the other hand, have not been. So you can always find a bull market or a bear market somewhere. And you can always find momentum somewhere. And that's always a good rule of thumb. You just got to look a little harder. Hopefully, we can do that in these videos. That's the point of making them a couple times a week. Right now, we're making two videos. Maybe we'll go to three if it gets interesting. But right now, things are kind of quiet. So two a week is, is, I think, a fair spot to be. And like always, leave any comments chart requests in the comment section below this video. We will get to those in the future videos. Bitcoin trending to the downside, obviously, as we can see, but also same thing, not really a doing a lot, kind of in a holding pattern, not moving in, in, in a massive fashion up or down with a clear trend by any means on the bigger, on the shorter time frames, bigger time frames. Yeah, a, a slight, a slight bleed out, a slight downtrend, 
is kind of the case. Uh, I do want to touch on a couple of things. ARC is one of them. Um, this is kind of, you know, summarize your risk on stocks. Had a good amount of volume on Friday. Now, Tesla's a pretty big component there. You've got some Coinbase. You've got a lot of crypto-related holdings in there as well. There are some heavy weights in ARC. But ARC has not been very strong and does not look like it's <laughs> setting up in any, in any way like that at all. Uh, continuing to trend to the downside. Maybe you have what looks to be a potential bear flag right, breaking down as we speak right now on ARC. If we keep seeing the 10-year pushing higher, then I would be looking at ARC for a potential further move to the downside. It is kind of in the middle of its range. That's what's only the only wonky thing about it to me. It's kind of in the middle of its range. There's a really good, there's really good volume support. If it gets to 40 or just below 40 bucks, very good volume support on ARC to be watching. So something to keep in the, in the back of your head. Um, ARC weak, but it's kind of looking at the 10 year and this, if the 10 year was to roll over, you know, could be an opportunity in the market. If like I was thinking today too, you know, hear me out on this. If let's say this is going to be a strong year in the market, you know, if we keep going higher on SPY, I'm not making a prediction by any means. If you guys understand this channel, if I watch a couple of videos, you know, we don't do that stuff. It's not the point. If you want to go get predictions, go to somebody else who's going to sell you a hope and a dream. And that's ultimately going to be more detrimental to your long-term um, success in investing and trading. Um, I can guarantee that because I used to do that myself, hence why I now look at things this way and make these videos because I think that's the way in my view versus trying to predict, oh, Tesla's going to go to 200 before the year ends. You know what? A lot could happen. A lot could happen. It could go to 100 and then it can go to 200 and then it can go to 300. Guess what? Who the hell knows? We don't. But if, right, if the S&P were to have a good year and keep going, okay, and we were to see that the 10 year was to roll over a bit, you know, maybe not, a t it doesn't have to go to like, you know, 3%, but if it were to break this trend and kind of fade out, you have I, I, what I think would be a really good opportunity in a sector of stocks like ARC, because they will be very sensitive to that and could move large in a large fashion. Same thing on the other side, if the market were to roll over substantially here and the tenure kept going higher, you have a very nice opportunity for further downside on ARC, probably to the bottom end of its range at a minimum. If this year was, a, if we were to stop right now and roll over on the overall market and the 10 year which to kind of creep on you know creep higher and continue with its uptrend from the past couple of weeks and also the past couple of i guess i should say quarters and years i guess it's been but more so quarters months to quarters on the bigger time frames which we've talked about in prior videos so that's kind of my you know you know back of the head back of the brain thoughts you know that there's the reason why i pull it up is because there's opportunity in risk on, you don't have to look at ARC as your example. You can say Kathy Wood sucks. You can love Kathy Wood. Who? I don't care about Kathy Wood. I really, I'm, I'm looking at the the idea of risk on stocks, and, and I use ARC as a good example. But there's a million of them, and there's other ETFs you can look at too. Risk on stocks, very sensitive to the 10-year going higher, and it seemingly as well on the same way on the downside. But if the market stays strong and the 10-year were to show weakness throughout the second half of this year, Maybe a sign that inflation is actually getting under better control the second half of this year because now we've held rates higher for longer than we thought and it's going to do its job in, in theory. Hopefully it does. There could be opportunity there, right? Uh, and the same thing on the flip side, if it's not the case. So that's my two cents. Hope it was helpful. Give you guys something at least to think about from a momentum standpoint, like a, 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 a high you know volatility idea um, because the S&P, as cool as it is, you know, it, it, it'll move, it'll move, you know, but it, it just doesn't seem like right now we have a lot of firepower underneath a, you know, continual propelling to the upside or even a, a push lower. That could change like this, but I think that the risk on sector maybe offers more opportunity for volatility given whatever happens across the overall boards. There you guys have it. That's today's video. I will leave links to TradingView to get $15 off any of their paid plans as well as links to guess what? Interactive brokers, which you can connect and trade on your trading view charts with interactive brokers. All that and more down below in the video description box. 
Leave any chart requests in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great weekend. Peace.